church. Good morning. I am so glad to see you today. It is a great day to worship God. Amen? Amen. So welcome, and if you're visiting with us, we're especially glad that you're here with us today. I want to give a shout out to our friends at home. Everybody turn around and wave to them. Yeah. And we're glad that you're home and worshiping with us as well. Even if it's not today, you may be watching us on Wednesday, and that's okay. We're glad you're worshiping with us. I have a few announcements just to draw to your attention to. Um, the Bloodmobile, in case you didn't notice, is in the parking lot, and if you are able to donate blood, I invite you to, to stop by and donate blood on your way home. You know, God gave us these great bodies, and blood is the thing that we can't replicate. And so it is, you can give the gift of life when you donate. So if you're able to, um, this is a great opportunity to serve others. Um, let's see. And I also wanted to draw out to your attention that, um, as everybody knows, General Conference went on the last two weeks, and I will be staying after church in the sanctuary here just to answer any questions. I know there's, I want to make sure there's no misunderstandings and miscommunication of things being said. Um, I have, let me show you. I have... A lot of the different things that were passed, um, that you've heard of a couple of them on the news, but there were a lot of wonderful things that happened at General Conference, and I'd love to share some of them with you and just talk to you about General Conference. So if you would like to stay, let me go and greet people who are leaving, and then just come down in the front, and I would love to talk with you and answer any questions that you have. 
Also on Tuesday after uh, Tuesday at six o'clock, if you like to Zoom, uh, the bishop and a couple of the delegates will be Zooming and talking about annual conference and answering questions at that time too. You do have to register, so um, we can't send you the link. So if you would like to be on that Zoom, if you would let Karen know in the office, and she will register you and um, send the link to you after you're registered. So that is a great time to also listen from people who are there a little bit of what was going on. So um, I, I look forward to talking to all of you after church uh, today. Finally, I want to welcome a couple of our new members and introduce you to them. So I'm Catherine, if you and Cyrus will come up. In the first service today, um, we had two new members that joined. They are, they've been going through confirmation with Russ and myself. Um, I said, told them I don't know what I'm going to do today when, without meeting with them. And uh, it has been a wonderful time. And they have made the decision to uh, confess their faith that was made for them at their baptism. And so did that this morning at the first service, which they attend. And I just wanted you to meet your newest members so you can welcome them. So this is <laughs> this is Catherine Logan and Cyrus Combs. So now you welcome them and we'll give them a big cheer. <laughs> From me <laughs> so so we're in good hands everybody we're in good hands so thank you I told them they didn't have to stay for the whole services so they already done the first one <laughs> so I invite you now if you'll stand and let's uh, open with our opening hymn
As we prepare for this morning's call to worship, I would invite those of you that were lucky enough to bet on Mystic Dan yesterday in the Kentucky Derby to know that you may share a portion of your winnings with <laughs> Trinity United Methodist Church. Our call to worship. Jesus did not come to establish denominations. He came to bring salvation to all who call on his holy name. Let us cast aside all that which is petty and irrelevant. Let us put away childish things that only serve to bring division and to us. The Lord calls us as one. God sees us as one. We, we are the church, church together. Our affirmation of faith is the Apostles' Creed, which is number 881 in the hymnals. Join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
As we gather for prayer, we remember that we are a family that goes through life together. And I am sorry to announce that Merle Briner has passed away this week. And so we pray that you will keep their um, Charlotte and the family in your prayers. As we gather, we remember that we are connected, that we are one, and that God calls us to serve in the world. And we remember that we fail so often. We just don't do a good job sometimes, and other times we are great. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us, to free us up, and to help us know that as we go forward, we go with God's presence with us. And so as we pray, let us remember that God is with us. Let's pray. A loving God, on this communion day, we remember that you gave yourself for us, that through your blood, our sin was washed away, and you gave us a chance for new life. We pray, Lord, that we can be excited about the ways you call us to serve you, that our hearts are open to the possibilities, that we have your eyes to see those people around us who may need a hug, a smile, just a friendly hello. Help us always to be remindful, Lord, that we are not alone, but that we are your ambassadors in this world. So guide us, Lord, empower us, help us to be truly your people. I pray, Lord, for each person here and within the sound of my voice. You know what is on their hearts and minds, Lord. You know the struggles that each one is going through. I just pray that your healing touches upon them, that your presence brings comfort and strength I pray, Lord, that you will empower them. Empower them in ways that they can't even imagine to serve you. And so as we worship today, Lord, we praise you and we give you thanks for all the blessings that we receive through your hands. And it is with the praise and gratitude of praying your prayer that we are reminded that we are not alone. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Would you play, pray for me as I pray for you? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Open our hearts and our minds to hear the particular word that you have for each one of us today. And I pray, Lord, that the words I say are not my own, but will be yours. Amen. I can't hear what you're saying. Linda Easter Day. Linda Easter Day. What's about? Walk down the aisle. Walk down the aisle. Just say some extra okay. prayers right there. We got, we're getting some water. Okay. That's good. So as we gather together today, we are continuing to go through the idea of the questions Jesus asks us. And the questions that Jesus asks us, are we're sort of finding out, are meddling questions, aren't they? They're not easy questions. And so today's question comes from the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, one through five. Don't judge so that you won't be judged. You'll receive the same judgment you give. Whatever you deal out will be dealt to you. And here's your question, all right? Why do you see the splinter that's in your brother or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? Let me read it again. Why do you see the splinter that is in your brother or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? How can you say to your brother or sister, let me take the splinter out of your eye when there's a log in your own eye? You deceive yourself. First, take the log out of your eye, and then you'll see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother or sister's eye. Jesus is giving us a warning that's pretty clear. Don't condemn or judge others. Now, Jesus is not talking about official things like in the court, but he's talking about in our personal lives that we are not to be judges and that we're not to see other people with condemnation in our hearts. This is a real important thing to be heard today, isn't it? Because in society, we are just in the middle of so much judgment and condemnation right now. There's a lot of finger pointing going on And it's only going to get worse the rest of this year as we head into election time. And it's real important for us to really understand what Jesus is saying to us. Jesus is not saying that we're not to let everything go, but that we're to have high standards, but that we're not to keep those high standards at the expense of other people when you have to have high standards that come from pushing down others, then that is not an adequate way to do that. So how as Christians, how are we to handle this? What are we to do with this? So we've been doing an anachronism for each one of our our questions, right? So this is this week's anachronism. I, E-Y-E. All right, you ready? We're going to start off with the first E, and it stands for everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. The problem is we don't usually know it. We don't usually know it. And it's very easy to pass judgment 
on others when we don't know their story. You all know that I was a psychotherapist for 16 years before God called me into ministry. And I have to tell you, during those 16 years, I have heard just about every story I think possible. Stories that have to do with, um, oh gosh, horrible, horrible uh, abuse. I've heard stories of heart-wrenching tragedy. I've heard stories of senseless violence that victims have experienced. I've heard love stories. I've heard amazing resilience of people. I've heard pretty much, I think, about everything. And as a result of that, I'm very much a gray person. I have a very hard time living in the black and the white. Because when you've heard so many stories, you realize the black and white is very different in some ways in how it's lived. I find black and white sometimes just very hard to look at when it doesn't take into consideration people's stories. I remember one time when I was in seminary and um, ethics, I was in my ethnics class, it was my least favorite class because it dealt with black and white and gray, I wasn't sure where gray fit in it. And I remember one time in particular, um, we were paired up and there was another girl that I was assigned to. I was an older seminarian and she was right out of uh, college, 22. And uh, we were to talk about our issue as abortion. Everybody had gotten different issues. And we weren't to state sides or anything, we were just to talk about you know, things that went on and, and the ethics with it. Well, it became very clear she was pretty much set in the black and white. And I would sometimes share a story and she, it's like, no, that's not really the way it is. And I was like, it was a, we had a, I had a struggling time during that, um, during that class. And I, she was getting ready to start an internship at um, a woman's abuse center for that semester. And so during that time, I, I, just, I just said, as she started, I said, just be open and really listen to the women. And so that is what she did. And she came to me at the end of that semester, and she said, Linda, I thought I had it all figured out, but you're right, hearing people's stories makes it a harder decision um, in terms of what I feel is right and wrong. And that's it, what it is for all of us, is that Jesus wanted us to hear people's stories. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna keep preaching, they're gonna come in, um, and I just ask you to just keep, um, stick. we just will continue with the preach and let them do their work, okay? Jesus wanted us to hear people's stories. So think about the, the stories that Jesus told. Jesus talked about people's plights. He talked about the situations that they went through. Think about the stories. The stories of a hemorrhaging woman, stories of tax collectors, stories of a Samaritan that helped people. All those people were people that people were, they were on the outskirts, the outskirts of society. And they weren't people that people normally talked to and knew their stories. But Jesus, over and over, if you looked at what happened, as they talked and talked and talked, Jesus wanted us to hear other people's stories. And that's what it is for us, is that we have to figure out ways to hear people's stories. We have to hear the ways that, that Jesus sees people in different situations. 
And that is important for all of us especially as we want to learn and be encouraged. We remember, and to have the eyes of Jesus, we remember that everyone has a story. So now we have the why. We have the why. The why stands for your ways of protection. Your ways of protection. It's a little bit of a funny why, I know. How do you protect yourself? Now, I'm not talking necessarily physical these things, but how do you protect yourself emotionally? Do you find yourself putting other people down, focusing on their things, on their problems, to, as a distraction from your own? That is a big protection mechanism that we all do in society. Because when we are focusing on other people, then we can't focus on ourselves. But Jesus also tells us when you're focusing on other people in that way, you're not focusing on me either. You're not focusing on me either. Jesus wants us to have those high standards. But Jesus says it's okay to disagree. It's okay to agree and disagree. It's okay not always to be of one mind about things as long as you're of one mind of on me. You have to be on me. And over and over in scripture, he calls us not to be godlike. I read today from the Common English Bible because I really liked how they did the scripture. In some of the other versions, it talks about the speck and the plank. The speck in your eyes and the plank in others' eyes. But I really like this where it talks about the sliver and the log. Um, I can relate to that sliver. How many times have y'all gotten a splinter in your hand or foot or something? Yep, yep, well, we've all gotten those splinters, don't we? But when you have that splinter and you can't get it out, what do you do? You, just, you can either dig it out with a needle, you know. I remember my mom always trying to dig it out, and I'm like, no, just leave it. But a lot of times we just leave them, and we think they're okay, right? But after a while, that sliver that's sort of stuck in there can start to fester and can start to, to have infection around it. And it comes back and it bites us for not taking care of it, doesn't it? Condemnation is the same thing that when we don't take care of things that we are judging or condemnate, when we keep putting it on the others, it's like we're leaving a splinter in ourselves. We're not looking at what is going on with us, and it can fester and get infected, and it can come back and bite us. Jesus is saying, make sure that not only are you not condemning others, but that you are taking care of yourself. You're not leaving those splinters. You are processing what you're going through in life. Because we are great about pushing off looking at things, right? Anybody in here just not want to deal with stuff and you push it away? Or focus on somebody else so that you don't have to look about what's going on with you? Jesus cares about us and really wants us to be healthy. The last E is for enough. Enough. All around us right now, I feel like we are in the battle of the logs. Does it feel that way in society right now? It's just so much blaming and condemning and judgment that is going on in the world right now. Finger pointing everywhere. 
It just seems like it's getting worse, and it will as we go through fall in an election year, but it just seems like it's getting worse all around. I'm really dreading the fall. Just, it's sort of like, oh, do we have to go through it again? But more than that, we need to, as people of Christ, recognize that we have an important role of witnessing a new way of doing things. Jesus calls every Christian to be an example, an example of, of how we're to live with not condemning and not judging. I want to read to you from Romans 2. How do we keep things from getting out of control and live? Romans 2, the first verse, and then the third and fourth. So every single one of you who judge others is without any excuse. You condemn yourself when you judge another person because the one who is judging is doing the same things. And then it drops down a little bit and asks us a question. Do you believe that you will escape God's judgment? Or do you have contempt for the riches of God's generosity, tolerance, and patience? Don't you realize that God's kindness is supposed to lead you to change your heart and your life? Jesus is saying, focus on God and the grace that God gives all of us and that we are to be those examples in the world of a different way of doing things. Now, all of you know that General Conference has just ended. I have to tell you that I already had this passage picked out long before, but it just seemed to apply so much to what happened this week at General Conference. I've been watching online as much as I could, and I've been in touch with friends who are there, getting emails and Facebook posts and so forth. And every single person has told me that this general conference was very different. It was, they just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. They said that in the past it's been a lot of tension a lot of fighting, a lot of judgment and condemnation. But this is what one friend of mine wrote. She said, there was a beautiful spirit of cooperation based on mutual care and concern for others. Did that mean everybody agreed? Of course not, absolutely not. That would be a miracle if you had 800 and something people that all agreed. I actually, I would be really scared if we had that many, every single person agreed. But there was a spirit of intentional listening and of reaching out and caring for what everybody was going through. And let me give you an example. One of the um, resolutions that was up to be voted on that came out of the committees was the definition of marriage. What came out of, the def out of the committee to be voted on was that marriage was between two faithful persons. And the way that they change and work on things is that people, before a vote, people start making amendments. And it can be really crazy. It can drive you nuts when you're wanting to get things done and a new amendment comes up and a new amendment. But it's a way of tweaking and working on amendments. And I remember there was this one woman, she was a lay member from Africa. And she said that that will not work in our situation, in our context, because we are dealing with a problem in which men have multiple wives and in which children are being married off to people at very, very young ages. She said, we need help in protecting them. 
And so after a lot of debate and listening and many, many amendments that came forth, the, and that really caring about this woman and situation, it was amazing to hear it. This is what the definition was affirmed. Marriage as a sacred and lifelong covenant that brings two people of faith with the definition of an adult man and adult woman of consenting age or two adult persons of consenting age brings them into a union with one another and into deeper relationship with God and the religious community. I witnessed this sense of really caring and listening to each other and working to make sure all were trying to be included and in recognizing the different situations that life is go through. Even when I saw disagreement, there was only a couple of times that I flinched because it felt like the words were harsh, but the bishops were wonderful in containing that and loving it out. And it was a whole different thing from what I have witnessed in the past. A friend told me that she loved the diversity of culture and language that was able to na navigate in a gracious and respectful way. The focus stayed on Jesus and the ministry we were called to do in the world, she said. Love God and love others. Isn't that what Jesus is calling us to do? To be a model for others in this world, in this time in which so much condemnation and judgment is passing and anger, and that we, if the church can't be the example of a different way of life, a different way of dealing with problems because of our faith in Jesus, the world's lost. That's my opinion, that the world is lost, because Jesus makes the difference. And so that is what, as Jesus was talking about condemnation and judgment, he's saying, leave it to God, that you are to be in the world to be an example of a new way of living to show that, that the focus is to be on the glory of God. And then in our way of living is to show the grace and the love of Jesus, not the judgment and condemnation of the world. So I, everyone has a story. Your protection can get in the way and enough, enough. What are we going to do to make a difference in the name of Jesus? And it is so appropriate that we come together to meet around the Lord's table, to remember how Jesus calls all people to the table. Jesus' table is large and wide. And it is a table that allows for us. Anybody in here not a sinner? Anybody not going to come up because you're not a sinner? This is a table for all of us. And Jesus invites us all to the table. As we come and prepare our hearts, I want us to go into a time of, of prayer, of confession. And today our prayer of confession is going to be private. I'm going to start you off, and then we're going to have a moment of silence. And I want you just to pray your prayer of confession to God in your heart because we all struggle with different things, and we struggle with needing healing and wholeness. And so this will be our time with God to pray our prayer, and then I will close us. Let us pray. 
Oh, gracious God, we are all sinners. Forgive us when we pass judgment. Forgive us when we, pre we try to protect ourselves by putting others down and focusing on others' problems. Help us, Lord, to truly follow you, even when it's really, fairly difficult. So, Lord, we pray today as we all come together, each one of us, Lord, will lift up our prayers of confession to you. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, Lord. We pray for your forgiveness. And we know that through the cross, we are forgiven. Empower us, Lord, to make a difference in the world. In your holy name. Amen. Sometimes I've had you ask, well, what are we doing? Where is that, what you read and stuff for communion come from? So I'm going to tell you, if you want to follow along, I don't always use this one, but if you would like to follow in your hymnal, that's that blue dusty book in the pew there. It on, starts on page 13, where I'll be starting. And if you, your, the words and your responses will come on the, uh, up on the screen. But uh, if you want to follow along with what I'm saying, you're welcome to. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. For our friends at home, I hope that you have been able to get a piece of bread or cracker and juice, and it is the blessing of this that is upon your elements as well as you share communion with us. All right, I need, there it is, sorry, it got moved. The body of Christ, broken for you. And the blood of Christ, shed for you. We need another piece of bread. There's only one. There's only one. In the United Methodist Church, we serve an open communion table, which means you do not need to be a member of this church or of any church. All you need is a heart that's open to receiving this gift of grace from God. Will my helpers come forward? The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you she's got more We have gluten-free elements available, and Karen will be serving you in your, in your um, seat if you would like to be served in your seat. So when she comes by, if you'll just wave her down and let her know that, um, that you would like to be served in your seat. And we have gluten-free elements for you, if you would like to receive them. The table is prepared. I invite you to come down the center aisle, and actually, let me take that back, go down each of the two aisles and return to your seat in the center. The table has been prepared, come as you will. body of Christ broken for you. But the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. That's right. The body of Christ broken for you. Let me turn off my sound.
turn, turn yourself on. Faith we sing.